Hey there, Mr. Zonker here, and it is finally time for our video on writing equations from sequences. We've been working with sequences using equations, sometimes trying to write some, but we're going to formalize that here and now. Let's get to it. I know this is a lot, but this is going to summarize everything we kind of need to know about explicit and recursive equations, whether they're arithmetic or geometric. An explicit equation is one we can substitute n in directly to find the term. And a recursive equation, we rely on previous terms to find out what the next terms are. Arithmetic, we remember we have a common difference. We're going to represent that with D. The zeroth, or starting term, uh, is going to be A. For our explicit equation, we know arithmetic equations are linear. So this is going to look like Y equals MX plus B. In this case, T of N equals the common difference times the term number plus the zeroth term. For a recursive equation, we're going to use t of n plus 1 to represent the next term, and that equals the previous term plus the common difference. Plus this, plus this, plus this. That's how we generate our table. A different way to write a recursive equation instead of t of n plus 1 is just this a n plus 1 equals a of n plus d. You could see recursive equations either way. For geometric equations, we have a common ratio r the zeroth term a. For our explicit equation, we have t of n equals a, the zero term, times the common ratio to the power of n. That would be like multiplying the common ratio over and over and over again the number of times uh, uh, as the term number. For a recursive equation, we say the next term, t of n plus 1, is equal to the last term, t of n, times that common ratio. Or our kind of our alternative way to write that recursive equation, a n plus 1 equals a of n times r. Finally, to find the nth term, substitute in n into the equation. That would be the explicit equations. For recursive equations, you also need to substitute in the previous values. Let's practice one of each type. Here we have the arithmetic sequence 2, 6, 10, 14, and we can kind of see that that common difference is 4. Uh, we've got 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10. Uh, if we want to find the zeroth term, that would be the term before. And if we subtract 4, we would end up getting negative 2. So we've identified our common difference as 4, and our zeroth term is negative 2. For our geometric series, we've got 5, 25, 125. Looks like we're multiplying by 5 each time. That's our common ratio, and if we want to find the zeroth term, we need to divide by 5, which would give us 1. So we've got a common ratio of 5 and our zeroth term of 1. Looking back at that explicit equation, we know that our arithmetic example is going to be t of n equals our common difference times n plus our starting term, in this case, negative 2. That's our common difference and our zeroth term. For our geometric equation, looking back up at the explicit equation for that, we have t of n equals our zeroth term, that's 1, times our common ratio to the nth power. Our zeroth term 1 that we found up here, our common ratio 5 to the nth. Let's see how we could use these equations. If we want to find the 11th term, all we would do is we'd take that equation and plug in 11 for n. That'd be t of 11 equals 4 times 11 instead of n minus 2, which would be 44 minus 2 or 42. For our geometric sequence, we want to find the 11th term. Do the same thing. t of 11 is going to equal 1 times 5 to the 11th power. And I'm going to have to break out my calculator for this one. And that looks like it's going to be 48,828,125. That's 1 times 5 to the 11th power. Now time to write our recursive equation. Looking back at our kind of instructions, we have the next term, a n plus 1, equals the previous term, a of n, plus 4. For our recursive equation for a geometric series, our next term, a n plus 1, equals our previous term times our common ratio. Notice we don't use the zeroth term here, but when we use these equations, we do need to find the term before. So for example, if we want to find the fifth term, 
that would be the fifth term. That would be a of 4 plus 1 because that 4 plus 1 is 5. And that's going to equal the a4 term plus 4. If we look back up at our sequence, we need our fourth term. It looks like our fourth term in this sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4, 14. So what we can do is substitute 14 in for the fourth term. That would be equals 14 plus 4, giving us a fifth term of 18. Looking at our geometric recursive equation, it says we want to find our fifth term. But if we go up to our sequence, we actually only know our first, second, and third term. And that's when it comes, uh, that's kind of the thing with recursive equations. We don't know the z, we don't need to know the zeroth term, but we have to know the term before it. So before we find the fifth, we're going to have to find the fourth term. So that would be a of 3 plus 1, because that will be our fourth term. That's going to equal our third term times 5. And from looking at that sequence, we know our third term is 125. So that'll give us 125 times 5, which is going to be 625. Now that we've got our third, our fourth term, we'll be able to find our fifth term. That would be a 4 plus 1 is the fifth term, and that's going to equal the fourth term times 5. We just found our fourth term, which is 625 times 5, giving us finally a uh, fifth term of 3,125. The last thing we're going to look at is kind of some terminology as far as sequences and functions go. Sequences we usually describe as arithmetic or geometric, where functions we describe as linear and exponential. Now we can say sequences are linear or exponential, uh, but it's just kind of the, the phrasing we typically use in math for each. The domain of sequences is all whole numbers, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., to represent the term number, where the domain of functions typically can be all real numbers, including fractions, decimals, uh, square roots, etc. Both sequences and functions can be described as a mathematic functions. That would mean each input has exactly one output. They can also not be functions if that's not the case. Uh, one thing we've been working with a little bit is we have got a sequence here, t of n equals t 2n plus 10, the function f of x equals 2x plus 10, and they're asking, is it possible for t of n or f of x to equal 15? If we were finding this out, we'd say, hey, can 15 equal 2n plus 10? And if we solve this by using our solving steps here, we'll end up getting a n value of 5 halves, which, as far as sequences go, that is not in the domain. We need to get a whole number here. So in, in this case, is it possible for t of n to equal 15? We would say no, because uh, 5 halves is not a whole number. Whereas if we solved this equation, this 15 equals 2x plus 10, and we got that same value of x equals 5 halves, that is totally okay in regards to our function because our domain is all real numbers. So this would be uh, this would be a big yes uh, for the function. So there's just some of the the differences between the two. All right everyone I know this video was a bit long but we only I was trying to fit it into uh, one video instead of two separate days uh, so I hope I hope it worked out I hope it was helpful.